On this day, 121 years ago, most of downtown Jacksonville burned to the ground. As we prepare to mark Jacksonville's 200th anniversary next month, this morning we look back at that afternoon of terror as it's been referred to more than a century ago on May 3rd, 1901. The trouble started during lunchtime here at the Cleveland Fiber Company located near the corner of Union and Davis Streets. As a local historian explains, workers there had just spread out huge amounts of Spanish moss so that it could dry to be used to make cushions and mattresses. Cleveland Fiber Factory uh, in La Villa was an odd building because it had this huge platform two blocks long, one block wide, and that's where they spread the moss out to dry. There was also a three-story warehouse, wooden warehouse next to it, packed with moss, horsehair, feathers, palm fronds. The factory owner knew those materials were very flammable. Historian Dr. Wood says a watchman was hired to put out any fires sparked by nearby cinders, but... He was asleep with the rest of the guys because on this day there was no wind, so they thought, well, an uh, errant cinder from a little cook stove happened to land on the moss at lunchtime, and the fire caught up before they could do anything about it. It was roaring across this big drying platform, and they threw water on it and did the best they could, but it, it caught the warehouse on fire, which erupted into a huge explosion that cast these little bits of moss and horsehair and feathers and uh, bits of cinders all over the sky, just as the wind whipped up to 15 miles an hour, blowing toward the city of Jacksonville. Within just two hours, the grand hotels around Hemming Park were reduced to ash, and rubble. By five o'clock that afternoon, most of the homes and businesses on the north side of downtown Jacksonville were gone. Then the wind did a crazy thing and shifted to the south. So all the people who had gathered along the river to try to escape the fire, they were now in danger. 40 people on a dock at Market Street became trapped. And the dock caught on fire, and so they leapt into the water for safety, just as Mr. Kummer came along in his yacht and pulled them to safety. Flames could be seen glowing in the sky in Savannah. Smoke was seen in the sky from the Jacksonville fire in Raleigh, North Carolina. There was an engineer on a ship in Miami that looked up and saw two sunsets. One was in the west and one was in the north. The one in the north was Jacksonville burning. By 8 o'clock that night, the fire had consumed 2,368 buildings along 146 city blocks. It was stopped by Hogan's Creek on the north and east and the St. John's River to the south. There was simply nothing left to burn. Seven people died. 10,000 were homeless. The governor, William Jennings, declared martial law and sent in the state militia. Jacksonville, a tourist mecca for all those who lived along the northeastern seaboard, was destroyed. It's just unbelievable, the images. And for more perspective, this is a map showing all of the city blocks that burned that day, May 3rd, 1901. So it started here. You can see where I told you at uh, Union and Davis Streets here. And all of this marked in brown. These were all the city blocks that were destroyed that day. But in a true testament to the tenacity of our city, the very next day, the people of Jacksonville formed seven committees and started work immediately to rebuild our city. And within two years of the fire, more buildings had been built, Bruce, in downtown Jacksonville than had existed before the fire had even happened. Okay, so the building where the records were housed had been destroyed. So how did they know who owned what? I, you know, it's, it's such a fascinating part of this story, and it's so interesting. So I want to just, that I've got some before and after pictures also, because you're right. The, the reality is, is that the Duval County Courthouse, which housed all of these, this paperwork, and you can see the, well, we'll show you in just a second, the before and after, while it was constructed with thick, thick walls, which you can see on the left here, all of the paperwork inside was still destroyed by the fire on the right. So it looks like it's still, you know, it's fine. But the reality is, is if you can look through those, those windows, it's gone on the inside. And so it just had turned out that a man who owned a title company had just handwritten copies of all of the county's deeds and titles. And when he saw the fire, he put all those copies in a boat and rowed it literally across the St. John's River to save them. And that is the basis of all deeds and titles in the city of Jacksonville today.